Welcome along guys. Well this is a bike I've been waiting to get my grubby little mitts on for quite some time because this is the new Tuono factory. It's a bike I've ridden many times before because of course Womble's got the 2017 version which is more or less the same but this one has the beautiful Olin's semi-active electronic suspension so I'm really interested to see that what difference that makes to the bikes. Massive massive thank you to wheels motorcycles for lending me this i've had it for about four days it hasn't stopped raining this is the first dry day we've had and i'm absolutely itching to get on this bike strap yourselves in as you know there's been a whole host of new Super Nakeds been announced this year already. There's the new Ducati Naked, 208 horsepower, a Panigale V4 without the fairing, and around £17,000 for the base version, they're saying. So that sounds amazing. There's, of course, the H, the ZH2, which had just been unveiled. 200 horsepower, supercharged. But those bikes seem a little bit too crazy. This bike is 175 brake horsepower. Is it enough? <laughs> Let's find out. Here we go. Whoa! I've got the electronics wound up quite high on the anti-wheelie and the traction because it is only about five degrees this morning. It's absolutely bitter. The roads are cold. Super courses on stone cold roads are not the best tyres for these conditions. So I've sensibly turned my traction control up to level seven. So that's why we're flashing like, I know it's Christmas almost, but that's a lot of Christmas lights. So big news on this bike is the electronic suspension. It's the Olin's EC2 system, which is their top of the range system. I think it's exactly the same system that is on the Ducati V4S models. Obviously Aprilia have adapted it to suit this bike. It's not just a bolt on, it's been some adaptation by the Aprilia technicians to make it work on this. So there's a semi-active mode where basically, you know, it measures what it looks at the IMU, sees what angle the bike's at, see, looks at how much travel is being used on the suspension. It takes in lots of other factors and then it decides the preload settings, the rebound settings for the actual suspension. So it's making that decision for you, however many times a second it is, quite a lot. So what that means is you should really have the perfect ride for any conditions. That's the sem semi-active mode. There's three different options for semi-active. You can have it in comfort, you can have it in fast road, or you can have it in track mode. So at the moment, I've got it in ASC, which is a Prillia suspension control level two, which is the fast road option. Mm, the road conditions are not ideal. <laughs> So much low down power in this engine. Front is trying to come up. Wheelie control keeping it on the deck, almost. Blipper. Oh, it's, it's, it's absolutely heavenly, that blipper. Absolutely beautiful. Quick shifter is also incredible on this. Another fantastic feature of this bike is the brakes. That front brake is the best out there. It's fast bits of road. That suspension is... Pretty cock on, I would say. Oh, it's a good bike, this. It is a very, very, very good bike. So, to change everything, you go to this little joystick. Another slight criticism, it's quite a small little fiddly joystick. And when you've got gloves on, sort of semi-winter gloves, it's not particularly easy. So what we do, we press it. Oh, I'm stuck in the, this menu now. What, oh, hang on. How do I get out of that mode? Oh, I've got to do it when I'm stopped. Can I not play on the go? Can I not play in that menu on the go? I don't think I can, you know. Surely you don't have to stop the bike to adjust the suspension settings. That's a bit rubbish. 
Might as well get my spanners out. There we go, A3 should be comfort. And when the bike's turned off, you can hear the bzz, bzz, you can hear the little servos going in the sus suspension legs and the shock, of course. Right, let's uh, try that. This is comfort now, so let's, let's have a nice cruise. What they've also done is they have increased the suspension travel from, I think it's 117 millimeters to 125 millimeters of travel on the forks, meaning that when you're in comfort, there's more range of movement uh, of the stanchions so you can you know, so it's more comfortable yeah that is quite comfortable actually that's definitely softened it so if you were going touring you, you just stick it or long distance ride you just stick it in semi-active three because you can also then go into these settings and adjust it further which we're, we're doing the walk around but yeah that's quite nice actually and of course, because it's semi-active, it's adjusting all the preload for your weight. So you've got like a bike set for the perfect sag all the time. It doesn't matter how much weight you put on over Christmas. <laughs> you don't have to go back to your local suspension specialist to set your sag up again. Now I'm going to have to stop again, aren't I, to change it back. Oh, I don't like that. Ooh. That sounds naughty. On and off the throttle with that soft suspension mode it's it's definitely got more transition and the wheels wanted to come up a bit more because it's the rear softer let me pull over again and, and i'm going to change it again now i'd like to be able to change my suspension settings on the fly aprilia please this is hard as it goes we'll see if we can notice the difference between soft as it goes to hard as it goes one of my gripes with super naked because of the riding position, because you're up above the bike a bit more, you have less weight over the front wheel. So if I get, I did a track day a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I did a session on Womble's Tuono, and he did a session on my GSXR, and I was miles off the pace on the Tuono because the front end just felt horrible because you haven't got the weight over the, when I'm riding the GSXR fast, I don't think, the front end. I don't really feel the front end so much, and it just feels like the bike. But on a tr on a super naked, you can really feel the front end, and sometimes you get a little bit of an impression that it's it's struggling a little bit. something to do with the bars because you've got that extra leverage of the bars on the super naked it makes the front seem like it's doing its own thing compared to the rest of the bike whereas on a full sports bike i think where you're a bit forward more you've got a bit more weight over the front you don't have that so much it's just a different way of riding i suppose you ride a super naked far in a different way than what you ride a sports bike fast i mean on a sports bike i'd be right down you can't really do that on this you've got to sit back and be upright a bit more for ultimate performance on the road or track they're not as good they're not as good i have to say but you get a lot more you know, there's a lot more comfort involved with the super naked that is what you're saving on you're losing out on performance a little bit but you're gaining back in comfort because even though this is probably the most focused of the super naked well until we try the new ducati and zh2 at the moment this is the most focused of them all the most uncomfortable if you like because the pegs are a little bit higher than uh, say the super duke a bit further back than the mt10 because this is an a chopped up rs34 at the end of the day let's not forget that it's not a dedicated custom built naked bike so there are some compromises with this bike like the steering lock's not great because it's an rs34 more or less but the uh what's i saying i've gone off got my saying now morning so it may not be the most comfortable of the Super Nakeds, but it's absolutely fine. And I actually prefer a slightly forward position anyway, because sat bolt upright, all your weight is on your bottom. So your bottom goes numb after an hour in the saddle. Doesn't matter how comfortable, how well padded that seat is, your bottom goes numb. You need a bike where you've got a little bit of weight forward, so you've got a little bit of weight off your ass. And this is what I love about the Torono, it doesn't give you sore bottoms <laughs> like the Super Duke does, like everything else does. And the sports bikes are the same, they don't give you a sore bottom because you get more weight on your wrist. You're, you're spreading that load across your arms, your back and your core and your ass. So it's not all on your, your ass isn't doing everything. 
The electronic suspension also adjusts the steering damper, which is nice. So the old Torona just had a manual steering damper. Now the suspension also adjusts the steering damper between the different sport modes. So that could be why the front end seems a little bit more stable. Because in this track mode, obviously the, I, I'd imagine the steering damper is also hardened up to stop it waggling so much. Could be, I suspect that's why. Oh, 30. Let's keep it legal. Yeah, so far, I'm very impressed, actually. It's a great bike, you know, the, the older... From 2017 onwards, when they when they facelifted it, well, not really um, lifted the face of it, but they, they put some extras on it. They had the TFT, the blipper, and, and the quick shifter, whatever other bits and bobs they did to the bike at that time. Different mappings, you know, it was, it, it was a big, big step up for this bike. This is another big step up, I think, that electronic suspension broadens it up a bit more, improves the use of the bike, makes it a little bit less, it's still focused, but gives it a bit more practicality on top of that focusness. Focusness. It's a word now. Whoa, it's got so much mid rain, it just takes off. Let's try the sporty setting through these twisties. Bloody battery run out on the camera back there, that's quite irritating. This cold weather, my hands are absolutely freezing, and it also affects your battery life on well, the GoPros. It's uh, yeah, so I lost that bit of uh, talking away, producing some excellent content, wasn't recording. <laughs> oh dear, here we go again. When you're on the boil, the throttle is a little bit snatchy. I've just gone through the modes to see if I can improve it and the race mode seems to be a little bit less snatchy on and off the throttle. I think also in race mode you get less engine braking as well, which is a bit of a shame because I like a bit of engine braking. But it makes that throttle fine inputs a little bit finer. This is 175 brake. Already the front wheel is just trying to lift it all the time. It's the, the throttle's having to kill the front, kill the throttle all the time. Let's keep the front wheel down. What on earth is over 200 horsepower going to be like on a naked bike? I have a feeling it could be, unless the electronics are better than this, which will take some doing, I think you're going to struggle actually be able to use that power. Already the throttle is being feathered with 175 brake horsepower <laughs> and fantastic electronics to keep it in check. Morning! What's 200 going to be like? Crazy! But it'll be fun finding out. <laughs> My hands are absolutely freezing because one thing this bike doesn't have is any heated grips. It's got, it's got cruise control, which is great, fantastic, what a, what a lovely addition for a road bike, but there's still no heated grips. It'd be great to see some heated grips on it for next year, just to complete it, and that road bike package. Also, a fuel gauge, it's still not got a fuel gauge. I don't know why. I, I've heard that Aprilia are working on a fuel gauge for their bikes. <laughs> How hard can it be? to produce a fuel gauge. You've produced an exceptionally rounded sports package here. Electronic suspension, amazing electronic control on the bike with wheelie control, traction control. It can't be that difficult to add the electronics to make a fuel gauge work into that fuel tank. <laughs> it can't be. There she is, time for the walk round. It's a fantastically beautiful looking bike. There's no denying. Olin suspension with those Brembo brakes, incredible. Best Brembo brakes in the business. Fantastic feeling brakes on this. The colors for this year, I like the front end. I like the black screen. I'm sure the screen's darker than the old bike. I mean, these red highlights here, looks great. It's a fantastic looking front end. No LED lights, 
bit of a shame, missed opportunity, maybe next year. You can also get a pillion seat for these. They come with a pillion seat. This whole section comes out and it comes a pillion seat up here. But of course, it's, you know, it's got rear pillion, pillion pegs. It's not the best pillion bike in the world, but you can do it. A lot of people ask, where does the pillion sit? You do get a pillion seat with the bike. Well, it could be an option next time, I'm not sure actually. There's the rear shock, proper TTX, top of the range electronic suspension. The best in the business, best you can buy. The forks, they're the wires coming off the front forks to do the adjustment. I don't like the way they stick straight up. I prefer it if they sort of had 90 degree angles on them. Standard exhaust, sounds very, very good. And it doesn't look too bad for a standard exhaust, but you'd have to put the Akopovich on it. They sound incredible with the Akopovich on. Going into the menus, adjusting the suspension. Let me just show you quickly. APRC settings, and then you can adjust all your launch control settings, your ABS settings, wheelie control, all those options. But the Aprilia suspension control, you then have your six different modes. The A ones are the active, active settings. So if we go into say active sport, you can then adjust the front firmness, make it more firm at the front, make it less firm. Uh, you can even adjust like brake support. So if, I guess if under heavy braking, you can stop it diving even further by making it stiffer under braking and adjust how firm the steering damper is. So all of that loveliness, obviously the sport, the track, sport and road use. Then you've got the manual settings. This is like, basically it's non-active suspension. It's like conventional manual suspension, but rather than having to get a spanner to adjust it, you can do it all from here. So rear compression increasing, rear rebounds. So, you, you know, you, 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 it shows you what the default setting is and how much you're straying away from the default setting. So it's pretty easy to use. And if you're at a track day, you could go in here, say you're, you're got, you've got a track with very, very fast straights, but in heavy braking areas, you can say, right, I need more brake support, whack some more support on because I'm at a track which has very, very heavy braking. So I think, it, you know, it's an incredibly versatile system, this. But that's, that is a nice system, isn't it? That is a very, very nice system. Right, that's enough faffing. Let's jump back on. All that bottom end and all that bottom end power and torque makes a lovely road bike. I've said it before, I'm always gonna to continue to say it, but it's the truth. To enjoy something on the road, it needs to have torque. You don't want to be thrashing it all the time. You want to just overtake, you just want to, be able to open it up and go. That's what makes a good road bike. And this, because it's got oodles of shove, it makes a fantastic road bike. bike is a thousand pound more expensive than last year's model because of that suspension. Is it worth it? It's a toughie. It's a toughie. I'd say yes because I'm having much more fun on this. It, it feels much nicer to ride fast than last year's bike because all the preloads correct for your weight it's in super sporty mode. It's making that front end feel more in check than it does on last year's bike. So I'd say yes, it probably is worth an extra thousand pound on top of last year's model. It is. Also, if you want to go on touring and you want a bit more comfort, because this does make a good tourer, you know, Womble's toured all the way down to Spain on this. To have that option to put it in comfort, I'm sure he would have appreciated that. So yeah, I think it's worth an extra thousand pounds. I'm going to sound like a wheels motorcycle salesman now, but I've got to say it. Wheels have actually got these for sale for 13,995. This bike should be 17,000 pounds. They've got these for 13,995 at the moment. 
that is an absolute bargain. So there we go, the Aprilia Tuono. Incredible bike, and I hate it when you ride a bike like this, which gets you questioning what bikes you own. I guess there's no bigger compliment to a bike to say that it's done that. To think, well, ooh, is, do I need two sports bikes? Should I have the, the H2 and one of the... There's not a bigger compliment to a bike when it does that to you. And I hate that. I hate that uncertainty it introduces to you as well. And it's the time of year when there's bargains to be had. As I said, Wheels Motorcycles, massive thank you to Wheels Motorcycles, by the way, for lending me this for a couple of weeks. What an honor, what a privilege. But they're doing these, as I say, they're doing these for 14,000 pound more or less and 400 quid for the Acura. That is a bloody bargain. Should I sell the GSX-R and get one of these? <laughs> I hate this time of year. You're not doing much riding because the weather's shit. All these deals come out trying to clear the old stock of last year's bikes and you end up just surfing eBay. Well, I do anyway. I'm terrible this time of year for looking at new motorcycles. <laughs> oh, and, and this bike has got me doing that. It's got me thinking, hmm, £14,000 for the latest Tuono with electric suspension. That is a bargain. That is an absolute bargain. But massive thanks to Wheels lending me this. I'll put a link to them below. If you're interested in one of these, you will not get a better price than that. That is incredible bargain. Anybody want to buy a properly sorted GSX-R? Anybody? <laughs> See you later, guys.